Hi, my name is Nick Kirkpatrick. You can find me at cvramen.com, also pokemonbitcoin.com. Uh, I'm going to be at the Hampton Roads Bitcoin Meetup. Um, the description is in the link, so just click on that for the information. Uh, I, today I wanted to address some of the uh, common objections to Bitcoin adoption. Um, and I guess first I, I decided before making this video that I was going to go ahead and separate the wheat from the chaff. So what I'm going to be addressing are just objections, objections to Bitcoin. So I'm not going to be addressing things that are just outright false statements like, you know, Bitcoin's prohibited in the U.S. Uh, they give out Bitcoins, you know, for free. Um, you know, Bitcoins uh, can be copied, or, or Bitcoin was hacked. That's a very scary uh, <laughs> headline. So I'm not dealing with uh, things that are just not actually true state things that are false statements. I'm just dealing with objections to Bitcoin adoption. Um, one of the most common ones is that Bitcoin is overpriced. And you'll, you'll hear this. Um, in, in different forms. You'll hear, you know, that, uh, oh, that silver is undervalued. Silver is overvalued. Silver is overpriced. There was a commercial, I was uh, seeing it on a news channel just a few days ago. You know, uh, the, the company, they, they uh, you know, want you to invest in, in silver, uh, and, and, you know, they, they put on their advertisement. Some um, analysts say that silver is overpriced. What a meaningless statement. What a bunch of nonsense. What does that even, what, a, what does it even mean to say that silver is overpriced? If, if you're going to say that silver, <laughs> um, the price of silver isn't what you think it ought to be, then that's not, that's not a, a real conversation. That's not a, a, a deep and meaningful um, you know, discussion about the issue of silver. That's just whining. So, when people say Bitcoin is overpriced, um, call them out on it. Ask them what they really mean. Because, well, if they're, what they're saying is, well, I think the price of Bitcoin is going to go way up or way down in the future. You know, if people say Bitcoin is overpriced or Bitcoin is underpriced, ask them what they really mean. Because if, if what you mean is, if they say it's overpriced, if what you mean is, I think that the price of Bitcoin is going to go down significantly in the future, then just say that. You know, don't use this sophistic language, Bitcoin is overpriced. If, if you think that Bitcoin is going to go down, then just say it. And, and that's, that's a legitimate conversation. Is the price, you know, is the exchange rate of Bitcoin going to go down? significantly in the, the near or distant future? Is it going to go way up? Who knows? That's, that's legitimate conversation, and there are lots of different factors involved. <laughs> but uh, to just say it's overpriced is a meaningless statement. Uh, imagine that you are uh, playing a, a soccer game, and, uh, and you say, whoa, you know, the, the score of this soccer game is not what it's supposed to be. Didn't, didn't you see... Um, uh, my teammate, he, he tripped and fell and wasn't able to block uh, that, that goal from being made. And so the, the score of the soccer game is off. Y you can't just say that there are factors involved that you don't like and just ignore them and, and pretend <laughs> that the score of the soccer game isn't what the score of the soccer game is. If you're, you know, you're, you're not talking about the score of the soccer game in some parallel dimension. You're not talking about um, numbers in this own fantasy that you've worked out in your own imagination. What happened, happened. And the factors that were in play were in play. So the score of the soccer game is the score of the soccer game. Um, there, are, there are lots of different uh, economic phenomena where there are factors that, I, you know, I don't like. Um, if you look at the, the Middle East, uh, there are large numbers of people in the Middle East who um, make the assertion that it's wrong to give out money for interest. And so think about all of the, the 
endeavors that have never occurred over the past few centuries because of this, this you know, irrational uh, point of view. Uh, think of all of the businesses that have never been started and all the homes that have never been bought. Think of, of all the opportunities that could have been had um, o over the past hundreds of years but were prevented because there were large numbers of people who assert that it's wrong to give out money for interest. So, and I can't just say, oh, well, you know, that's, that's uh, a rational, a silly thing for people to think, and I don't like that factor, so I'm just going to ignore it. And, uh, you know, the, um, the economic, uh, you know, um, wealth and, 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 and growth and, and the quality of living in the Middle East is actually, it's, it's underpriced. You know, you, you don't get to say that. The, the circumstances, the conditions, the economic conditions of the Middle East are what they are. And so, if you want to say that people are holding Bitcoin because it's irrational, well, in every single economic uh, s speculation, every single economic conversation, all, all models of economics should take into account that irrationality is going to happen. So if you think that it's irrational to own Bitcoins, again, stop using this sophistic language about Bitcoin being underpriced and just say, what you mean? Say that you know you think that it's irrational for people to want Bitcoin. Um, you have to include irrationality in your economic models because um, irrationality is something that's always going to be present everywhere in every circumstance. It's it's not a good practice to just ignore the factors that you don't like. Again, if if you want to say the price the exchange rate is going to go down or go up in the future, that's a good conversation and bring up your reasons why. Don't just, don't just throw this overpriced stuff at the wall. You know, that's, that's just a word. Overpriced is just a word. It doesn't mean anything. One of the other common objections to Bitcoin is that it was designed to benefit the earliest adopters. And, you know, the first reaction out of me is, you know, two, two words, so what? The people who, um, who started in Bitcoin back when the exchange rate was one cent or, you know, less than one cent, they didn't know what was going to happen in Bitcoin. They didn't have the knowledge that you and I had. So they were taking a risk. They were putting their dollars and exchanging them for Bitcoin, and they were doing something that they had no guarantee of, of any benefit to themselves whatsoever. They took a chance. So, yeah, they ought to be rewarded. They, <laughs> they were the innovators. They were the first triers. I don't see how this is a unique phenomenon. One of the uh, things that people say is that uh, that because of the way that bitcoins are mined, um, I'm not going to be covering that in, in, in this video. That, that you could do a whole video on that, so you can go look, look up bitcoin mining and, and how that works. Because of how bitcoins are mined, how the new bitcoins are created, and the, the difficulty goes up every time new bitcoins are, are generated, um, people say that this was designed to benefit the earliest adopters. And again, I, I say, so what? I think that they, they deserve to be rewarded. But it doesn't take into account why um, the mining uh, system was set up the way it was. And this is just my opinion, but the, the reason that Bitcoin was set up so that mining would become more and more difficult was that it was set up so that there will always be some Bitcoin left over. So no, no one is ever going to have all of the Bitcoin. No one can, can grab them up. Even if, even if someone hypothetically was able to simultaneously uh, acquire all of the world's Bitcoins once at some Bitcoin exchange, you know, it's, it's stupid. It's an absurd scenario. But let's say someone did it. Well, there are still new Bitcoin being mined. And so the, if, if someone acquired all of the Bitcoin and just... I don't know, and they all got lost. 
uh, there's there's going to be an incentive for people to mine Bitcoin. The incentive for mining would, would go way up. It's an absurd scenario, but but it, it was important for the mining to increase in difficulty because that guarantees that there's always going to be some leftover. One of the uh, other objections people have to Bitcoin adoption is that uh, Bitcoin is pretend money. Uh, Bitcoin is uh, a digital asset. It doesn't exist in physical reality. It's not like uh, um, gold or silver. Um, you can't see Bitcoins. You can't touch Bitcoins. It's funny money. It's made up. It's So this is one of those areas where I test people for consistency. And testing, testing people's assertions for consistency, this isn't about me. This is about me and getting what I want. This is not about, um, about what Nick Kirkpatrick likes. This is not about, what, uh, about me having my way. Consistency is part of life. It is, it, it's, it's just like the scientific method. In that, you know, I, I don't advocate the scientific method because, oh, I like it. You know, so the scientific method should be used because it works. So, um, when people um, say, make assertions, test them. Call, call them out on it. Call them out on consistency. So, people say that it's, it's pretend money. It doesn't exist in physical reality. Okay, well, most of your U.S. dollars <laughs> don't, don't exist anywhere other than stored on a computer somewhere. So, if you reject Bitcoin on, on the premise that it is, uh, it is pretend money, that it doesn't exist in physical reality, okay, well, but let's, let's see, do you, do you apply that to every other part of your life? So, people object to Bitcoin uh, on the basis that there are no let's call them, I don't know, silver certificates. Uh, there's no um, place where you can uh, be guaranteed to get something in return for your Bitcoin. Um, in, in much the same way that, a, that a, a, a silver certificate would work. Well, of, co of course not. Of course <laughs> there, there are no certificates um, where you can go re redeem your Bitcoin for something quote-unquote real if there was, that would mean that Bitcoin is handled by a central organization. That would mean there's a central organization in charge of, of Bitcoin, and that's kind of the thing that they were trying to avoid when they set up Bitcoin. Um, they were trying to, uh, you know, make it so that no, no one entity was in charge. So it would be very ironic um, to promote it as a decentralized currency and then... Um, and, and this be, you know, be known public information, and then people to start complaining about um, there not being some central mechanism to guarantee the value of Bitcoin. <clears throat> um, people uh, complain that Bitcoin is used for drugs. So one of the things that Bitcoin is great for is that it's, it's the world's first decentralized digital potentially anonymous currency. It can be used anonymously if you so choose. It, it's, it takes a little bit more effort, but you, you certainly can use it anonymously if you want to, and um, that makes it useful to do things that are uh, prohibited by your government, like uh, purchasing uh, prohibited substances. So, again, let's, let's test it for consistency. When people um, transact in cash is using cash US dollars cash just a, you've got you've got the a hundred you've got a stack of 100s it's cash no one can see it it's not being recorded on a computer does that invalidate your use of cash because uh, because it's anonymous if I have like I've got this uh, five grams of silver I've got this tenth gram of gold that I, I carry in my pocket all right, well, you give me something, you know, you give me some cannabis, and I'll, I'll hand you some, some silver and some gold. We do it face-to-face -face on a questionable street corner, 
and no one sees it, well, it's anonymous. Now, does anyone say that gold and silver don't count as currencies just because, you know, someone can use it anonymously and therefore use it for drugs? you you, you got to test people on consistency here. People don't, don't actually believe that Bitcoin shouldn't be... Um, shouldn't be acquired, that Bitcoin shouldn't be popular because it's used for drugs. People don't actually believe that because you, you can test them on that. Test them on that assertion. Because, look, <laughs> you know, they, they, they accept um, uh, anonymous currencies in, in other, other aspects. And, uh, and I, I don't know, maybe there's some small minority of people who think that cash shouldn't, shouldn't exist. You know, the, the, the point of consistency is that you, you can't just say something and, and allow your um, personal preferences to get in the way of, of what you say. Um, you can't uh, drop a rock uh, on top of Mount Everest and then drop a rock um, at five feet above sea level and say, well, well, you see, gravity works differently at five feet above sea level. No, gravity works the same. So when, when people say, uh, you know, make assertions of, uh, of a scientific nature, well, science is consistent. So, um, you, you can't, you, you can't just make an assertion and you shouldn't make an assertion and not expect people to hold you to it. Um, you can't say that 2 plus 2 equals 4 um, over here in the United States, but, I don't know, when you cross uh, some imaginary line on the ground called Canada, uh, that 2 plus 2 equals 6 or 5 or some other number. It, it, it just doesn't work. Um, Yes, yeah, see, consistency is, is, is very, very important to me. Um, one of the things that people um, uh, like to talk about, for example, uh, holding um, police officers uh, accountable for their, for their action, holding them morally accountable for what they do as individuals. Um, sometimes people will say, oh, well, look, no, 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 it's, it's okay. Uh, he was just uh, following orders. So if someone says that, well, just, just test them on it. Test them on it. So, <laughs> so if someone says, well, okay, yeah, he, he's not morally accountable for his actions just because he was, he was just doing what he was told, well, uh, in 1930s Germany, is it okay for, to not hold people accountable? Oh, because they were just following orders. And, uh, you know, you will, you will get people very angry at you. If, uh, if the person doesn't have the, an appreciation for consistency. So, um, gra gravity works the same everywhere. You can't just make stuff up about, uh, you know, gravity working one way over here and gravity working another way, you know, somewhere else. And similarly, when people make assertions about the way the world is, or the way the world ought to be, or the things that people should do. When they make assertions, and they don't seem to add up, test them. Test them on consistency. All right, tangent over. No, no more tangent time. That's, that's, that's done. Another one of the objections people have to Bitcoin adoption is that there aren't enough ways to... Um, there aren't enough ways to get Bitcoin, and that's true. But what you're what you're asking for is um, is for there to be a certain number of Bitcoin exchanges when the currency is less than five years old. Uh, another objection people have is. Oh, there's no point of sale mechanism for Bitcoin yet. There's no retail potential. I can't pay my rent with Bitcoin. I can't go to the food store and, and, and buy my milk and eggs for Bitcoin. I can't buy fill-in-the-blank. 
And it's, it's true, it's true that, um, that, that yes, most people on this planet do not accept Bitcoin yet. And may, maybe they won't. Maybe uh, some other currency will uh, prove to uh, be more effective than Bitcoin. Who, who knows? Who knows? But what you're, what you're asking is that a, a currency that is less than five years old just have, have what you want. And that's unreasonable. I mean, the United States government has been printing dollars since, I guess, 1789. So, you know, how advanced was the U.S. dollar? in, you know, 1794. Uh, the U.S. dollar um, wasn't, uh, well, it's definitely not perfect, but, uh, you know, it, it didn't have all the things that, uh, it, it hadn't reached 100% saturation, and, um, and no, 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 okay, point is, the point, the point is that you're dealing with a young currency here. Bitcoin doesn't have to be perfect because it's not competing with perfect. Anytime that someone proposes some, some new action be done or some new idea become popularized, uh, people just, just uh, go attack the, the new thing and, and say, uh, you know, c complain about it not being perfect. But not being perfect, that's not a problem because what you're competing with isn't perfect. What you have right now is not perfect. So all this stuff about you not being able to go to every single restaurant and, and pay in Bitcoin, not being able to pay your rent in Bitcoin, not being able to do a whole bunch of things and pay in Bitcoin, that's not a symptom of Bitcoin's failures. That's just a symptom of Bitcoin being a new currency. Another objection is that there are only 21 million Bitcoins, and this is actually a pretty easy objection to knock out of the water. So 21 million Bitcoins, they're divisible up to eight decimal places. So do, do the math. You go ahead, you can whip out your paper and, and do 20 million, add eight decimal places afterwards. There's enough Bitcoin for every person on this planet to have some. The world's population would have to be a little over two quadrillion for there to be uh, too many people to not have enough Bitcoin. And besides, that, that's, assuming, that's assuming that Bitcoin is the only currency. I would say that most Bitcoin advocates aren't saying that Bitcoin should be a monopoly. I'm, I'm pretty darn sure that nobody is saying Bitcoin should be a monopoly. And, and I'm pretty darn sure nobody's saying that Bitcoin is going to be dominant and it's going to be the only currency. That would be a silly thing for a currency to um, be uh, ha have its proponents be be advocates of um, you know of decentralization, you know, uh, having the people's currency, as it's often called, and and say that well Bitcoin is going to be the only currency. Now there are going to be other currencies competing with Bitcoin. As as Bitcoin becomes more and more popular, there are going to be things that that uh, compete with it, and maybe maybe even become uh, more popular than Bitcoin. But there's enough Bitcoin to go around, because it's divisible up to eight decimal places. Another one of the objections that's also uh, very easy is, <coughs> excuse me, another one of the objections is, I don't know how Bitcoin works. And I'll bring it up again, the C word, consistency. So, let's test it out. You don't know how it works. Well, I have a car. And I can, um, you know, put oil in it, put the gas in it, and, and fill up the tires. But when, when it's not moving anymore, and I want to make it move again, I take it to a mechanic. So, um, I was, I was just, uh, I heard recently about this, um, popular article about pencils and that there's no person on the world who, who is a single-handedly makes a pencil. Like, the creation of a pencil is the joint effort of tons and tons and tons of people. And it's, you know, it's very efficient to do that way, division of labor and whatnot. But in our lives, we accept 
that there are things that we don't know how they work, and we use them anyway. Now, the, the number of people who have Bitcoin today and who know how the Bitcoin system works from top to bottom, front to back, who know how the whole thing works and could recreate the system themselves, a very, that's a very small chunk of that group. I would say that's maybe 5%, maybe even less. We're talking about everyone who owns Bitcoin right now. Is a, is a very, very small chunk of people. And there are very, very few people who know how every single part of a car works from top to bottom. Right? Even, even a mechanic. Um, I'm, I'm sure they, most mechanics have to ask for help every once in a while. And if you, you know how the whole car works, you're probably not a mechanic. You probably work for the car company designing their, their next models. And you're probably making big bucks. But everyone drives cars. And they don't know how it works. You know, can you um, tear apart your computer and um, take it apart and put it back together again? Do you, you know, do you know how the water purification uh, out of the, the water out of your sink? Do you know how all that works? I certainly don't. I couldn't recreate that system on my own. So, if you say you're rejecting Bitcoin because you don't know how it works then you're not being consistent. So uh, I think, uh, I think I'll uh, quit there for now. There are uh, plenty of other objections to Bitcoin that I probably haven't thought of yet. So um, I, I spend quite a, a bit of time uh, researching Bitcoin and finding out information. So if you have any other objections to Bitcoin that you think of, you know, um, leave a comment, send me an email. Uh, go ahead, hack away, pick my brain. I, I would love to handle um, all of the objections to Bitcoin because I think this is fun. I think uh, getting to watch this whole thing is fun. Getting to defend Bitcoin is fun. I'm enjoying this. So if you have any more questions, um, we'll, uh, we'll see if we can make another video like this. Uh, my name is Nick Kirkpatrick. My website is cvramen.com. You can also find me at pokemonbitcoin.com. Thanks for watching.